So judges may have sought the extradition of Julian Assange to the US, even if it's only temporary. Julian Assange has been handed a reprieve in his fight against extradition to the US after two judges ruled the WikiLeaks founder could take his case to an appeal hearing, but only if the Biden administration is unable to provide the courts with suitable assurances. The president of the King's Bench Division, Victoria Sharp, and Mr. Justice Johnson said Assange had real prospects of success on three of the nine grounds argued, but adjourned the leave to appeal application to give the US government three weeks to allay their concerns on the relevant matters. If Assange had been denied permission to appeal, he could have been extradited within days to face espionage charges. While the judge's decision means he avoids that fate, it leaves him facing a further wait with his future still unresolved. So of course, this isn't a win in terms of protecting journalism, nor is this a win against censorship, which is what should be happening. I mean, Assange shouldn't even be in prison. He should be free. But the years-long legal cases have been around technicalities, but these technicalities have so far saved him from strict punishment or even death by the US. Now, as it stands, if Assange is extradited, he will likely face the rest of his life in prison or even the death penalty. Now, the justification for this gross level of punishment is that he will be tried for espionage, essentially calling him a traitor to the US, undermining national security and siding with the US's enemies. Of course, this is a load of rubbish. Rather, the US is trying to make an example of him by throwing the book at him and more. This isn't about someone who willingly threatened the security of the US. This is someone who has published war crimes of the US and they simply don't like it. This is a revenge mission and it's to tell other journalists, do not expose our secrets. Otherwise, the same will happen to you. The country that loves to call itself the land of the free is anything but. It is a country that has caused so much destruction around the world, engaging in coups when they don't like the democratically elected leaders, bombing and droning innocent people and standing by genocide. Now, in terms of this case, the judges surely know that the US wants to make an example out of Assange. Otherwise, why have they asked for assurances of a fair trial? But the problem is they would never allow a fair trial. It's why the US has never given assurances in the past, and they won't now. Look, they may say, oh, well, he will get a fair trial, but words are meaningless. In fact, this is something I've only discovered. I missed it at the time, but back in 2021, there were plots of his assassination from the US government. Senior CIA officials during the Trump administration discussed abducting and even assassinating WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, according to a US report citing former officials. The discussions on kidnapping or killing Assange took place in 2017, Yahoo News reported, when the fugitive Australian activist was entering his fifth year sheltering in the Ecuadorian embassy. The then CIA director Mike Pompeo and his top officials were furious about the WikiLeaks publication of Vault 7, a set of CIA hacking tools, a breach which the agency deemed to be the biggest data loss in its history. Pompeo and the CIA leadership were completely detached from reality because they were so embarrassed about Vault 7. Yahoo cites a former Trump national security official as saying they were seeing blood. Some senior officials inside the CIA and the Trump administration went as far as to request sketches or options for killing Assange. There seemed to be no boundaries, a former senior counter-terrorist official was quoted as saying. This is insanity. They want him dead because he did his duty as a journalist to expose war crimes. This isn't about justice. This is revenge. They basically admitted that themselves. It's about baying for blood. This is the scale of corruption that exists in the US. Of course, it does exist in every government to some extent, but the US is the world's powerhouse and they believe they can bully other nations at will and they want to do it with impunity. Now, there is a potential big downside to this decision And that is expressed by Julian's wife, Stella. What the courts have done has been to invite a political intervention from the United States. Send a letter saying, it's all okay. I find this astounding. That is a really good point because, of course, the US will say the right things. And then in turn, the judges may turn around and be like, well, they've given assurances. Let's extradite him. But instead, the judges could and should have simply said, we cannot trust the US. Therefore, he would not be extradited. So I don't know, it's hard to see whether this is a positive development or a negative one. And Stella makes the point that this is bad. Look, another way looking at it is that the judges have potentially protected him. But how protected is he? I mean, still locked up in Belmarsh prison. He was stuck inside the Ecuadorian embassy for years. His physical and mental health has deteriorated. He has already faced punishment for standing up to power. And I don't know whether this is a good or bad development. And I want to I want to hold out hope. But knowing how corrupt the US is, they won't stop at anything to get Assange.